Okay, so uh, today we have a second last class. The last class will be next week. Um, I will update the, I have already updated the wiki, but I will also check if we have all the deadlines correctly set. Ah, yeah, there is no, um, no correct deadlines. Uh, the final essay submission is Sunday, 5th of May, for the third round, and 30th of, of April is the actual uh, submission, right? So submission and then a few days more for the reviews. Um, we will not have time to discuss it, so the final round is just through the review process. Um, next week what, what we will talk is I will probably go over all the topics that will be in the exam, which we covered in the essays and in the in the classes. Um, so we would just have like a review session to go over all the topics. And what I thought doing today is to go over the um, the essays and the reviews. So yeah, we we get a bit of a feedback and a, a little bit of a discussion on. Um, on the new versions. So in general it's better than last round. Uh, as I was explaining to you before, I observed that in the previous years as well, that the more you do it, the better it gets. So it's, it, it is actually structure-wise much better uh, than the first round. Uh, so I hope the final round will be the best. <laughs> um, there are uh, typical things that you can easily fix. So some things which we were discussing are mechanical, right? So those relate to like, uh, for example, having a, a name of who wrote it, having a date um, and so on. So those are kind of a simple things to fix if, if you are lacking it. Um, so those mechanical simple things, are, you know, are simple, but you should, you should make them. Um, so for example, this one, doesn't have a person, doesn't have a date. Um, this one has review of, pa of paper essay 2, uh, no date and no person. Um, and some are using LaTeX template, and those which use LaTeX template are forced to have a nice uh, structure. So by default, they kind of look good. Um, so let me just bring. Yeah, so Machi, yeah, because uh, review of what the review is, the name and the date, it's like all, yeah, you know. Yeah, I think in LaTeX I can somehow remove the date, but I don't see the point of it because yeah. the, the format forces still a white space there. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so I, I managed to remove the date, but I still saw, yeah, the, the text didn't shift up and give me more space, it just was blank. Yeah, so also, um, you can see, for example, for Maxim uh, paper essay, uh, he used slightly different formatting. He used his own formatting, right? Which is fine. Uh, so he has kind of a blue uh, section numbers, uh, section titles, and then the references. And then the title, the name is here, course code, and the date, right? Uh, there is nothing wrong with this, right? It's, it's fine. It's just that mentally it took me more time to see where things are from compared to Machi, which is like standard way of presenting the date and the name and the title, right? Uh, so when I first saw that, it's like, okay, uh, there is no name and no date. It's like, actually, there is a name and there is a date. It's just that it, it's harder to find, right? Um, so sometimes, con a being compliant with a format actually makes it easier for the reader. Um, but th this is fine. The, the, the formatting is, actually, I think the is fine. I formatting is standard in uh, high school. That's how I formatted my stuff in high school, I think. Yeah, and in some journals, maybe they use that yeah. formatting style, right? So it's... Like triple E standard stuff. I yeah. Have, I think. Um, the other thing... The other uh, small thing is that, uh, for example, his one was a review, and he has a very simple structure like a summary, review, and conclusions. Uh, same for the for matches, uh, standard way. Most of you were kind of following that. For the essays, 
it's not that standard because depending on the nature of the essay, the, the, um, the structure differs, right? Um, so, for example, for this one, there is introduction, background, and then there is uh, conclusions at the end, right? And the thing is that the background is split into um, reinforcement learning and then there is a discussion part. Discussion usually is, um, uh, it's not necessarily reserved, but usually what you do is you present your results and then you discuss the results. So you kind of uh, reflect on what are the limitations of the results, what could be done else to the results and so on. It's a discussion about the results. Whereas here the discussion is about the entry point. It's the discussion is about what we're going to discuss in the paper, right? Uh, so it's fine, but it's a little bit, uh, for some, again, for some readers it took mental work to kind of um, decipher that. And then the final thing is um, uh, language is kind of part of this mechanical thing but it plays in your favor if the language is tidy and if there is no spelling and grammar mistakes and it plays unfavorably if, it, if they are, right? Uh, because the reviewers of your master thesis, if you say, if you have a lot of uh, grammar mistakes or spelling mistakes, will kind of think of you as a bit, um, a bit unstructured and a bit uh, sloppy, right? So I've noticed that some of you have problems with plural verbs, uh, with using uh, plural nouns with a verb which is not a correct form. Um, and sometimes there is a, like a typo where, where someone says something is, has, blah, blah, blah. So one verb has to go because it's either is or it has, whatever. Uh, so those are simple mistakes which uh, you can you can easily fix by feeding your essay through some grammar checker. And there is a grammar checker uh, called Grammarly uh, that is quite good and the free version picks up all those little things and it will kind of highlight what it thinks is wrong and it helps you to remove all those things, right? So for the essay, it's small enough that you can probably do it yourself, like read it again carefully and fix it yourself, but some things you may miss. So then if you use this uh, grammar checker, it will kind of uh, pinpoint those trivial things for you. And then, of course, it, it's not going to solve your uh, writing style issues or anything like this, but it picks up those mechanical things, right? Um, and those are kind of important. So, okay, so let's go uh, in order. I, I use the same order as in the table. Um, so the first essay was the reinforcement learning, the AI essay. Uh, so as I'm saying, like you should put your name, um, date, um, the title is fine. Um, and then the, the essay starts, um, so do, do you have it on the computers? Um, I, I can read it. So the, essence, the essay starts, when talking about AI in game environment settings, it is common to think of AI systems that interact with the player in some way, right? So it's Kind of the introduction is about AI being used in games for part of the non-playing characters or something. And then it goes, uh, but AI can also be used uh, for teaching the system to play the games, right? So the author starts with how AI can be used, but this paper is not about that. The paper is about using AI for games, right? So, and that's a common pattern in in a writing where we start with something that is a background, something that is kind of auxiliary, and then we zoom in and we narrow down to something that is actually topic of the paper. Uh, in some languages, it's, that's the way you do it. You do it in Germany, in, in German like that, in Polish like that, uh, in Norwegian like that. In English, you don't do that. <laughs> in English, you zoom to the point first, and then you talk about the uh, auxiliary things, right? So you, sometimes you have uh, a pattern where uh, what it is not followed by what it is, what it is, 
right? So you start off what it is not, and then you explain what it is. Uh, in English, you have to turn it around. You start what it is, and then you may have some say, but we're not covering that, or we're not covering that, right? So remember to not talk about what it is not, and remember not to talk about two auxiliary things, but to zoom in directly of what this topic is, and then you can explore the background or what it is not and whatever, right? Um, so in, in, in this one, that, that's the kind of a typical case where we're talking about, oh yeah, AI can be used for this. But actually, this paper is about this, right? Um, it, it's easy to fix. You just turn the, the sentences around. You start, okay, this paper is about that. However, AI is also used for other things, right? So you just have to logically kind of uh, turn it around, but you can have it. You can have it in the writing of what it is not or what it is uh, about, like auxiliary, but always do it second. Don't start with it. Um, all right, so then the rest uh, was quite... Um, the, the rest was quite good. The, the first part was about uh, whether the uh, reinforcement learning can be used for, uh, for the games. And um, the paper kind of, uh, um, yeah, there were some small, um, yeah, it was, it, it could be done better. But the point was sort of made that because they've used this for this particular system, therefore it, it demonstrates that it can be used. But it's kind of a weak, um, weak argument. And then the second one was about the human uh, competitiveness, like how can, can, how can this, what is the state of the art? And that one was a little bit weak because it re reported on uh, one of the papers um, and it was more, yeah, so, so you can have, you can have kind of a two, in, in this particular settings, you can have two arguments. One argument is that something is demonst demonstrated uh, and then you kind of build up evidence for making a particular claim. But this claim is yours. So the evidence is from some other paper, but the claim is kind of you making the claim and using the paper as an evidence. Or you can review somebody else's claim. And then in part two, that was the case. Like somebody else has published a paper about showing that the uh, reinforcement learning is human competitive, right? So then the, the flavor should be more like a review. What were the limitations of the paper? What were the strong points? What were the weak points? What was the evaluation criteria and so on, right? It wasn't so much about repeating the same con con kind of conclusion. Um, so depending on what you want to achieve, you, you pick one or the other, but if you picked making a claim, it cannot be just restating the claim from an existing paper, which was exactly about that, right? Uh, then you, you try to fo form some uh, review opinion, like what were the evaluation criteria, what could, how could that be improved, or what were the strong or weak points, and so on. Um, but overall, it's, it, was, it was fine. Um, what I liked was the review of that one. So I like Marcus' review of that paper. Uh, and I, I, I think um, that this review and also Tomasz's reviews were the best in this round. Out of the essays and out of the reviews, those two were kind of standing out. Uh, the mechanical thing, it would be nice to have a date and it would be nice to have a title of what is being reviewed. Right, so some of the uh, some of the people when when they were doing review, they um, stated, you know, what like uh, that's what Maciej did. He, he said um, review of extending mobile blah 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 paper. Right, so then it's kind of clear of what what review that is. Uh, so that that's small mechanical things. Uh, date would be nice to have. And it would be nice to have references. So it would be nice to have what you were basing your claims on. But the rest is spot on. It's like a, a very good um, a review of the of the article, pinpointing the kind of uh, the the weak aspects of it, right? Uh, so I, I I like that a lot. Um, so um, that was the first first round. The second one is um, Glenn's 
privacy preserving blockchain based electric vehicle uh, review so he he used the paper and reviewed the paper like uh, summarized it and kind of discussed what were the, the potential limitations of the paper and so on um, so same uh, title is missing of what it is actually about um, <clears throat> and then there are two other mechanical things so one is in the second paragraph of the introduction he says one of these applications is the paper I have chosen so a paper is not an application you cannot say one of the application is the paper a paper is a description of an application but it's not an application right so you you, you try to use the language kind of precisely um, so you could say one of the one of these applications is described in the paper right um, for example Okay, and then the review follows, um, not, um, not much comments on that. Uh, I have kind of a side comments on the actual nature of the paper. So the paper was about using blockchain for electrical vehicle charging. So the electrical vehicle can advertise I need to be charged and it announces it to the charging stations, then they bid and they make an offer and then they the booking happens. Um, it wasn't clear from the review, I didn't read the original paper, but from the review it wasn't clear why they use blockchain. What was the global knowledge, the global state of the ledger that needs to be shared among everybody, right? Uh, to me, it looked like a normal peer-to-peer -peer system with some uh, security keys is sufficient because you don't really need to maintain any form of global ledger for anything. Uh, so why would you use blockchain for, for this particular scenario where the main objective was the privacy preserving uh, aspects, right? Um, so it wasn't clear what was the blockchain actually being used for. Um, and then some of the limitations of the approach would be kind of taking out if, if it was a system without the proof of work or anything like that, right? Um, you could imagine the vehicles having some sort of anonymized IDs and advertising, oh, I need bits. Um, why would you need blockchain for that? Um, all right, so that, that, one, that one was also um, in the first paragraph of the, of the actual essay. Um, when you... When you're introducing something to the reader, it's good to not say the paper, reference one, blah, 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 because then I have to look up what is the paper. I have to go there and check, oh yeah, it's the Knirsch and Underweger paper, privacy preserving, blah, 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 right? Um, so it, it's nice to say, let's say the first author's name at all in the paper, blah, 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 and then citation, and then go on with the sentence and then you can say the paper right because now I already know the paper right um, so again small thing right and then um, Maxim's uh, review of that paper was also good uh, good formatting uh, I would say review of what so it says essay to review but doesn't say of what the review is um, and in the first sentence of the conclusions, um, we, we, we read this sentence. The essay makes some very good points about how machine learning and genetic algorithms can be used in cryptocurrency markets. Ah, oh, yeah, that's a different review. Uh, so, sorry. Um, Christopher was the review of this one. So, yeah. So let's go with this one first. Yeah, so Christopher is, again, lack of name, lack of date, uh, and review of a paper, essay two, uh, which is noticeably the title of that, <laughs> of that thing, right? So that's fine. Um, um, I... The structure is fine, the, the essence of the review is fine. Um, the, in the conclusion we, we see the paper needs to be, 
the paper needs to be fulfill current scientific standards. Um, so, yeah, kind of the author makes the reference to the current scientific standards, right? Uh, what they are, like we, we need some sort of operational definition. We, ha we need some reference or something which will establish what we're talking about, right? Otherwise, we might be discussing two different things, both called scientific standards, right? Uh, so every time we making some reference to something or kind of evoke a particular conceptualization, it's safer if we reference something. So we say, as described here, or as defined in Wikipedia, or as defined here, right? So then we, we kind of ground it, we ground the term. Um, yeah, so other than that, it was, uh, it was fine. It didn't pick up on, the, on some of the merits, like why the blockchain was used or how the evaluation criteria were used, right? So you could, um, you could kind of be more picky about the actual content uh, as well. All right, so then... Um, then we have Maxim's um, liquid reality um, essay. So the essay is about the liquid reality system, which is um, emulating wetness on the face um, for virtual reality um, uh, experiences. And um, yeah, it, it was kind of a good review of the technology and a good review of the paper. It summarized what the paper was about. Um, it's um, it, it is kind of a, like a review essay, right? And as a review essay, yeah, it's it's fine. Um, it, again, we we see. The introduction introduce, in, introduces the paper, and then in the paper summary we say, in the paper, reference one, blah, 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 right? Uh, same, same comment as before. It's okay to repeat the first author name and, and so on, so then I don't have to look up into the reference. Um, so that, that one was fine. Um, no big big comments apart from the fact that again it doesn't kind of conform to the like if, if you kind of compare the styles there is nothing wrong with the style it's just that it's different to this one and this one is the more one that uh, like your reviewers will be more familiar with right so it, it kind of uh, pays a little bit in your favor to comply with the with the format so then we have the review of it, um, and a perfect start, a review of an essay and the title of the essay, name and, and so on, no problems with that. Um, we have some, uh, some points which, which are uh, to be addressed by the essay author, and also it says um, in the second Second section, last sentence, with a sample size of 13 for the first study and 15 for the second, doubts can be raised about the validity of the results. There is nothing wrong with the sentence as such, but it's, um, it, you know, what, what does it mean doubts can be raised? <laughs> what does it mean precisely, right? You can rewrite it using uh, it's hard to establish statistic, statistical significance, or it's uh, hard to address type one and type two errors, right? Uh, so you can be kind of, you can use some of those terms and some of the more precise language, right? Um, so what is statistical significance in, in a general, in general sense? How do we interpret it? How do we understand it? Large enough population to actually be a representative of what you're trying to uh, kind of measure. Yeah. So if you have uh, two uh, entries in your population, that's kind of a 50 50 thing. But uh, the more uh, entries you actually add, the more diverse the, the 
the uh, uh, the spread of the ghetto standard deviation, I guess. Yeah. So the first one is the number of samples we have, or examples, right? If we only have two examples, uh, so we take two people who smoked their whole life and they were living more than 100 years, and we say smoking is great, look, we have this sample of two people, they lived more than 100 years, they heavily smoked and drank alcohol, and that must be good for you, right? Uh, <laughs> right, so uh, statistical significance is influenced by the number of, of examples, and also this example about smoking uh, relates to type 1 and type type 1 and type 2 errors. What, the, what are those? What, what does it mean, type 1 and type 2 error? Uh, they are based in um, how you find a computer hypothesis. Mm -hmm. So one of them, I don't quite remember who, is to, <laughs> uh, falsely uh, or negatively uh, accept your hypothesis mm -hmm. to find a, based on false claims, you say that the hypothesis is correct, but you have some errors in your uh, population. Mm -hmm. uh, and the other one is to uh, falsely reject your hypothesis. So you find that you uh, draw the wrong conclusion from your data, and you say that your hypothesis is wrong, even though the data kind of supports it. Yeah. Uh, so we have this example of smoking plus drinking, uh, and living hundred years, right? We have those two old people. Uh, type 1 error is that we say smoking and drinking is good for you. That's a positive result which is false. That's type 1 error. We kind of claiming something that actually is not true, right? Uh, type 2 is the opposite. Like we have uh, data which doesn't support something which is actually true, right? Uh, so type 2 is a false negative. So we reject something uh, out of lack of evidence, which actually in reality is true, right? Um, so with, with number of samples, we often get those errors, right? Because we don't have, we either don't have enough evidence to support something, or we have not enough samples to support something that is not true, right? Uh, and then the second thing, which you uh, pointed out is the, let's say, standard deviation or, uh, you know, uh, statistical properties of the samples that we have, right? Uh, so we may have like uh, one million or large number of samples, but they are so noisy and so spread around that we have confounding variables that statistically we cannot infer, we cannot actually get the uh, the properties that, that reflect the reality. And usually we, we kind of get to the type 2 error. We, can't, we don't have sufficient evidence to support something, right? And then statistical significance kind of tells us uh, how likely it is that our result is actually supporting something, right? Usually we go either with 95 or 99 uh, percent of um, significance. So we say we are uh, supporting a particular hypothesis with 99 confidence that there is 1% chance that the actual support data is just a random generation of the statistical properties of the data that we have, right? Uh, so that is still possible that we are drawing false conclusions, that we have one of those errors, but it's kind of unlikely, right? Um, and 95 is usually the, the one that uh, most people use. It's kind of strong enough to suggest that there is this uh, relationship or correlation or uh, significance. So using those terms, using this kind of, uh, uh, you know, one of those things would kind of strengthen the claim. So there is nothing wrong with the sentence per se, but you can kind of make it m much stronger and much more precise if you use one of those. Uh, and then there is a nice reference, well-structured, easy to follow, uh, kind of a clear, uh, an example of a very clear, um, um, you know, summary, uh, review. So then we have uh, Tomasz's um, essay about using, uh, extending the RAM. 
So if you want to allocate more RAM that your phone has, the solution is to use cloud services to kind of give you the extended uh, space. Um, so the paper is, is interesting. Um, mechanics, again, there is no date. Uh, there is no, um, um, yeah, I mean, he's, he has his name. He's just missing the, um, the date. Um, and what I pointed out is that um, I missed, so a little, like when reading the essay, it's a little bit uh, difficult to follow the structure. Like uh, it's uh, a lot of information, uh, but it's not very clearly organized for the reader, right? It's there, but it's kind of difficult to follow it a little bit. Uh, and then the, the biggest problem I had was um, what sort of evaluation can we use uh, for this review to make it that it was a good review? So what it's not the evaluation for the actual paper, it's the evaluation for this, right? So what sort of metrics and what sort of uh, criteria can you use for the review paper to say that it, 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 it's good? What would you use? So they, the authors of the original paper, they used some metrics for evaluating time, energy consumption, some, some other metrics for evaluating whether the CRAM solution is good or not. And there are some trade-offs, right? That's fine. So now we're kind of going to the meta level. We're reviewing this. So how can you say that this paper is better than this paper based on what sort of criteria? How, how would you make um, the evaluation of of day evaluations, right? What what would you use? Look into the metrics. How relevant are they? How important? Exactly, exactly. So you need to form some sort of a table, some sort of list of what they've done and kind of evaluate it, right? Um, so looking at day metrics, um, looking at how many metrics they've used, like what sort of how, what what kind of different trade-offs they've used. Uh, so you, you need to kind of uh, self-reflect a little bit and kind of, uh, be, because in your writing, you don't, you're not doing that uh, explicitly. You're not saying, I'm using those metrics, right? But they are kind of inferred from the way you are evaluating the other evaluations. So you have to be, um, you have to be quite well organized and, and kind of evaluate the, the numbers. So, so similar was here, uh, actually, with the... Uh, yeah, so, so I, I will come to uh, Maxim later. But the, the point here is... This one is fine. You, it, it goes over the discussion of the, um, of the paper and the elements that the paper uses but it doesn't structure the evaluation of itself, right? It's not organized. There is no table. There is no list. There is no kind of a systematic approach to uh, picking the strong and weak points of the other paper's approach, right? And that is kind of lacking. So the discussion is there, but the discussion on the meta level is a bit unstructured. Um, so... So that's one thing. And the second thing is that there is never kind of a, a, a solution which fits everything, right? So one of the conclusions of the uh, review was that for applications that are requiring a lot of RAM, the CRAM is kind of a good approach. But, you know, what is the alternative? If, if you have 200 meg RAM on, on your device and your phone needs 2 gig, Okay, CRAM is one approach. What is that approach? Like, what else can you do? Uh, right? C could you compress it? Could you use some form of uh, paging into the persistent storage on the phone? Uh, maybe. Right? So there are kind of things which were not really addressed in the original paper. So when you're doing... Because... 
So let's say you, you've came up with something. So you've came up with a met method of uh, offloading the RAM to, uh, to the cloud storage, and you're now describing it, right? Uh, you want to sell the idea. You want to say, ah, this is a good idea. You can have now two gig, uh, an app which uses two gig of RAM on a 200 megabytes device because of our solution, right? Uh, you're kind of doing a pitch in a sense, but if you were doing it properly, you would review it, what strong and weak points it has to the alternatives, what else can be done, right? Um, but that was not really the goal of the original authors, right? And then the review should kind of pick it up, should uh, highlight it, some of the limitations of the approach or some of the alternatives to the approach. So you have to kind of step up a little bit and look at it from kind of a meta level to some extent. Other than that, it was fine. Uh, it kind of uh, covered a lot of information and co covered a lot of um, um, discussion about what was in the original paper and also highlighted some of the limitations of the, of the original paper, but not on this meta level, on, on kind of the more technical level. Um, so, yeah, that, that was... Um, I think the, the essay was more like convinced to something style. Yeah. So tried to convince me something, and if he was kind of shitting on the paper for half his essay, then it would be really convincing <laughs> to something. Maybe. Could be, yeah. Could, could be. So, but that's, that's what I said. Like, you can have a claim that you want to convince somebody to your claim, but it has to be your claim. If you're convincing to the paper's claim, then you're doing a review. You're not really doing the convincing anymore. You're just re-evaluating and you, your claim is that the paper is good, right? So maybe that was the claim that, oh, look at this solution, it's a very good solution, right? Um, I don't know. Uh, and then the review, uh, again, well-structured. Um, uh, yeah, picked up some of the um, some of the limitations. Um, yeah, there is a cost. There is the energy consumption. There is kind of a, again uh, lack of um, like it points out the lack of the uh, very systematic and structured approach to evaluation of those criteria, right? Um, so both the review and the paper also, as I started talking, uh, there is never a solution which is like perfect for everything. So what we as a researchers are trying to achieve is we're trying to pinpoint where a particular solution is best suited. What are the best practices? What are the situations where CRAM is like perfect solution for, right? Uh, what are the strengths? What are the weaknesses? When it should be considered, when it shouldn't be considered? Uh, all those things, all those trade-offs are kind of the essence, the, the interesting bits. Uh, and that was kind of missing uh, in the original paper. That was missing, but also highlighting it in the essay and in the review was kind of missing. It was there, but it was Im implicit, um, not kind of explicit, right? Uh, it was implied. All right. So then we have um, then we have Maciej, um article about the the miss of operating system power. Um, I liked it. I liked the because it was the the most. Uh, Kind of speculative in a sense, like th it wasn't just technology based, it was uh, kind of a human factor and, and social aspects based as well. Um, what I lacked was the uh, criteria which you can use, similar to some other comments, which you could use to assess that the particular claim is better or, or, or worse, right? So, for example, the, the kind of implied claim is that Android did much better than iOS. But in what terms? Did Android brought Google more money than iOS brings to Apple? Or what are, what are the criteria? Is it for the user experience? Is it for the quality of the actual operating system? Is it for, you know, what are the metrics? 
how can we evaluate that one is better one model is better than the other right um, I don't know it, it can be argued it can be argued that Android is less secure than iOS for being open source and not following strict I don't know some quality control or something right that that has been that the claims were actually both ways uh, they, they've been done about Linux and about Windows uh, one is being developed open uh, and all the bugs and all the vulnerabilities are there in the open <laughs> uh, which are much easier to find and easier to exploit than in Windows but then the Linux ones tend to be fixed faster and noticed faster and they have less impact than the Windows ones which lingers for years and they kind of um, are kind of hidden uh, and do you know what you're getting in patches for example? So you don't some of the Windows posts hash uh, KB yeah. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 this fixes something yeah you, okay I need to install the you know, so you kind of get that yeah, that's right. So, so I, I kind of I liked it. I thought it was kind of a good discussion on the overall aspects of the operating system development models and release models, and it highlighted some of the uh, limitations and some of the like fragmentation and and so on, um, compatibility issues. But it it kind of lacked the the systematic kind of uh, feel, the kind of a more kind of a metric based feel, right? So what are the criteria? What makes one operating system better than the other? Like, why can we say it's better or not? Again, often it's not about one being better than the other. It's, all, it's about the nuances, it's about the trade-offs. Like what does it, like for example, you, you mentioning, right? There is a, a release patch and then for the consumer, like we don't know what we're getting. Like, is it another, tool for Microsoft to get data about our usage patterns or is it really a fix, right? Um, there are some, um, what is it? Uh, there is one, maybe Adobe or someone who releases the raw format patches all the time for camera formats, right? Like formats are the same. <laughs> There's the, with the raw format, nothing really changes, right? Uh, so why we have all those patches? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so I I liked it. It was it was good, but you can kind of um, focus a little bit more on on spelling out the metrics, like what sort of criteria can be used. And it's not th this is not for you to establish that one is better than the other necessarily. It's about kind of having a kind of a, a framework for discussing privacy. Uh, time to market, uh, time to fixes, um, innovation, how many new features had Android had, for example, for notifications and so on that were earlier than I iOS and iOS kind of uh, took it later, right? Uh, you can have some metrics which then can be used to compare them. Uh, and on a particular metrics, you can say this one is better than that, right? Uh, because Android tend to have features earlier than iOS for example. Um, yeah, so that one, this one. Um, and then the review, the review was fine. Um, Tomasz did um, a very good review. Uh, that, that actually was the, the second best. So Marcus's review and Tomasz's review were really good. And he, you know, in, in conclusions, he pinpoints the metrics specifically he talks about you know uh, how we can compare it like you know essay presents positive picture but you know what are the what are the metrics really that we can use them to compare so I kind of liked the I liked his approach I liked his way of referring to statements and backing them up uh, with references and kind of a systematic kind of a comparison so it was uh, well done and well argued case for the review, right? Um, so I, um, it was very well, very well done. Um, and then we have the Marcus essay for the um, 
using ge genetic programming for crypto markets. And um, I same so title and the date would be nice to have. Um, the rest was well written, uh, easy to follow. Um, I am so every time somebody discusses uh, machine learning, uh, the first question is why do people use machine learning? Is it too hard to use brute force methods? Uh, if you have too much data to use brute force methods, and why don't you use stat statistical methods, right? So machine learning more often is a heuristic, which we use because of some reason, like because we cannot solve some problem, right? So traveling salesman problem for small number of cities is solvable by brute force. You can find the proper solution. But for large city, a large number of cities, uh, it's just too hard to find a, a actual global optima. So we have to use heuristics and we have to use machine learning and we have to use something to find the solution, right? So why did they use the machine learning in the first place was a little bit unclear because they used just few indicators, right? If you use a large number of uh, feature vectors, then those methods, the normal methods will fail because of the search space. Um, was that the case here? I don't know. It wasn't clear, right? Um, and then, the, so, so I would kind of um, either ask that question or try to evaluate that question from the, from the paper itself. Um, and then the second one, again, about being systematic about the metrics. So how are we comparing things? Uh, what, what was actually being compared? Um, so those are two small things, uh, but the rest, yeah, no, um, I, I quite like that one as well. Uh, I, will, I, I thought it was um, kind of interesting application of uh, genetic programming for uh, this particular domain. Um, and also the, the crypto markets are kind of a good source of, of real world data that kind of uh, allows you to, to do this type of research. Um, and then there was the Maxim's uh, review, which I, I mentioned earlier. Uh, so review was, was good. Um, I liked it as well. Well, well structured with references. Um, so in the conclusion, it says, the essay makes some very good points about how machine learning and genetic algorithms can be used in cryptocurrency markets. What's wrong with that sentence? Well, again, you know, not, nothing really wrong, but make some very good points. It's a very vague statement, right? You can make it stronger by saying the paper makes four good points, like, and list the points, right? Um, so you can kind of be very precise and also very systematic on how you're comparing it, right? So you can say the paper makes four good points and two weak points <laughs> or something like this, right? Uh, which kind of makes it more uh, measurable, more uh, quantitative, right? We want quantitative data because with quantitative data is much harder to argue, right? If a paper makes three good and, and three weak points, well, it's an average paper. But if the paper makes 10 good points and just one weak point, this must be a good paper, right? Uh, but if you say the paper makes some very good points, <laughs> oh, it's qualitative data, right? Well, we, we can argue, what does it mean? Uh, so try to, uh, as much as possible, be systematic and as much as possible, be precise and try to turn qualitative conclusions into quantitative ones, right? Uh, yeah, other than that, it was also fine. Um, so I, I thought the both essays and the reviews are improving. The comments which the reviewers are giving are kind of good. They um, provide feedback, positive kind of uh, constructive feedback for the writers. Uh, I liked reading the, the essays this time around. Uh, they, they were better. Um, and uh, yeah, how, how do you feel? 
how was the second round experience for you? I feel I knew more what I should write. I felt it was uh, easier to do, as mm -hmm. we've done so many reviews in both games and here in Nova. Mm -hmm. It was kind of easier and not as cognitively heavy to yeah. actually uh, yeah, read a paper and draw critiques and positive aspects you kind of learn what to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think your reviews in general are, are much better uh, than they were th at the beginning. And also I think your reviews are better than your essays. <laughs> so it kind of demonstrates that because of the games and uh, uh, all the reviewing that you've done, you kind of became better at it while uh, writing itself is harder. It's kind of a creative process to some extent. And it, you know, it's uh, less mechanical. You have to kind of think of what to write, what to put the structure in. It's kind of dictated mostly from your head, whereas reviews are dictated from the data, from the reading you're doing. So it's more reac reaction, right? And that is kind of easier mentally to, to achieve. Um, but yeah, I, I think um, it's it's been good in a sense that I, I think the both the essays and the reviews are kind of better than last year I, we had. Uh, so something we've been doing this year with Christopher and with his course kind of uh, help you to develop the skills a, a little bit better than we achieved last year. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm quite happy looking forward for the final round. Um, so what will happen is we will have um, the final round in a week. And then we will have another few days for uh, finishing up the uh, the reviews. I will put the table in um, today. And we will spend the next week uh, discussing the... I, I will make a list of all the topics that we covered uh, and what we will cover in the exam uh, for. So as I was explaining at the beginning of the course, the course has kind of a two components. So one is more mechanical, uh, more about you developing the skills for writing and for reviewing. Uh, and one is less mechanical and harder to tell you exactly how to do it because it's about the way you think, the way you structure your arguments, the way you look for the weaknesses, the way you look for the strong points the, look, the, the way you kind of connect the premises, the, the dots. Uh, and, you know, that's something we can give you feedback on how you're doing it, but not to tell you how to do it. Uh, you know, I, I don't know how to teach you that. So what, what we do, we kind of create an environment where we stimulate your way of, of thinking and arguing and kind of uh, making some of the drawing conclusions and looking for for things um, and I hope you know we achieve we achieved some of it uh, in, in the courses um, so yeah any comments any questions so what, what I will do is I will make a list of all the uh, topics that, that they were covered and some that we might have discussed in the class um, and then we will kind of uh, go over them um, next week and that's it um, based on the uh, discord poll uh, most people are happy with the exam on the 7th so we will run the exam on the 7th and then 8th I think is uh, serious games yeah, so um, we will skip the final discussion on the final uh, review. Um, I will, yeah, what we can do is we can do that kind of a quick discussion during the exam uh, so I can give you a feedback. I, th those things are kind of not graded per, per se. I'm kind of a more uh, looking forward for your final um, uh, kind of uh, essay and reviews. Uh, one of the 
criteria that we use for the portfolio is like your progression. Like uh, it's like if, if you did a very weak one in the first essay, but kind of do decent job in the third, that's good. Kind of shows kind of a good progression. Um, so the portfolio will be kind of graded uh, based on the yeah all the essays with the emphasis on the last one mostly. Uh, but yeah, like I, I don't see anybody doing really poorly. So most of you are, are doing fine. Um, I talked with Christopher and he also says that it's kind of uh, generally good. Um, so I, yeah, there is nothing to worry about. Um, yeah, when it comes to writing, um, we, we, you know, we're not running this course first time, so we, we're doing it. But every year when you start writing your master thesis, it turns out that you do kind of a common problems, common mistakes. <laughs> and we kind of emphasize it in those courses, but then you kind of do fall back into the old habits and, and writing it wrong. So like, for example, you trying to write chronologically what you've done for your master thesis, right? Master thesis is not kind of a storytelling. It's not about what you've done, what you were thinking. Uh, so, oh yeah, this week I was thinking doing that, but I changed my plans and I did that. And it's like, no, 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 <laughs> nobody cares, right? <laughs> uh, so master thesis writing is like this. It's like you're actually building up a description of, of the work that you've done, the evidence that you've collected and the experiments that you've run and the data and so on. So it's all about the same premise, right? So you have some hypothesis, you have prepared some software to collect the data or whatever, and then you analyze this and then you draw conclusions and then you kind of evaluate what was done well, what has weak spots, you know, did you achieve statistical significance or not? Most often we, you know, you, because you have very limited time, uh, if in the studies that, that involve users or that involve some measurements, uh, often you have not enough data, so you are prone to error type one or type two. Uh, you may not have statistical significance. Like uh, we had a study a few years back with a student and he got like 60% uh, or 70% statistical significance. Okay, what does it mean? Well, it doesn't really mean anything, but it suggests that you may have confirmed the hypothesis, right? But it's a very weak result, right? But it's not about having a very strong result. It's about the method. It's about the systematic approach and kind of doing all the parts properly, right? So if you have another three months, you could do this uh, data collection much larger and have kind of a stronger evidence, right? Uh, if the lack of conclusion is because there is no correlation, right? Uh, then, but you kind of try to avoid it by having kind of a good review before you start a particular study. You try to analyze all the confounding variables, all the variables that contribute to your, to your research. Um, often we have students who want to develop something, like they want to develop a system for, me, for doing something, I don't know. Um, but then that's fine as a bachelor project, just building a system, it's fine. But as a master project, you have to have something extra. You have to have some contribution to knowledge, right? If building a system is a task, that task can be given to a bachelor student. They can develop a system. What your role is, you, your role is to kind of use something, use tools, use knowledge, use knowledge of building something to learn something new. So for example, you may say, uh, we had students last uh, pre previously who were building a game in a functional language or in procedural language. And they've built the same game in both languages and compared how hard was it. Was it harder in one or the other? How much bugs they had? How much changes they had to do if they were doing refactoring? So they collected a lot of data about those little things. And then they concluded that this was faster or less error prone or easier to maintain than this, right? Uh, so you can do that. But then it's like building two systems and collecting data, how you've built it, right? It's not just building one system and say, oh, here it is, we've built it, right? That, that doesn't actually give you much to discuss. Uh, you may uh, want to discuss the architecture. You may say, I want to build the system and I want to find out what is the best architecture. 
uh, what properties will it have, uh, and so on. Uh, so you have to think and you have to plan a little bit because uh, once you start the actual master pro pro project, it's kind of quick. It's very short amount of time you have. Uh, you have you know less than half a year to kind of do everything. Um, so it's it's good if next semester you already start looking into what your project might look like, what you want to do, and start planning for it. We have the project planning work and so on. There are some courses which kind of push you to, to thinking about it. But we often have students who do one project for the project planning, and then they say, actually, I don't want to do that for my master thesis. I want to do something else, right? Which is fine. Uh, it's better to do that than to go into the project which kind of leads nowhere or which you don't want to do. Uh, but it's better if you have those thoughts earlier and you kind of do the project planning already for the project you want to do. Um, yeah, I had um, uh, yes, and often what happens in in the uh, master project, you have backgrounds that you have to describe, and. This background uh, is like reviewing a papers, right? It's just more of them. Um, but you can do it, as, as I'm saying, like you can do it for the sake of arguing your, your case, or you can just do it for the sake of review. In the master thesis, the better way is to do it for your own sake. So you kind of are comparing what they've done to what I want to do, what they've done, they, what their limitations were, and what I addressed. Uh, what I've done and what they've done, how they compare. Uh, so it, it kind of relates to your work. It's not like, oh, these guys did that, these guys did that, and these guys did that, and I'm doing completely something new, something else, right? Uh, that's kind of a bad background because it doesn't lead to the work you're doing. So it's with those little essays, we kind of practice that, like you're trying to argue something based on somebody else's work. Uh, you will, uh, if you continue with academic work, you will review other people's work just for the sake of review, for giving feedback on conferences and so on. But that's, for the master thesis, that's not the main point. The main point is to reuse. Um, and also it, it's about being kind of systematic. So, um, for example, as a bachelor student, you say, oh, I want to build this game. Okay, let's let's do it. Let's just put things in and we will have a game, right? As a researcher, you say, okay, let's build a game, but first let's check what other people did. Like, did somebody already build the game like this? How did they've done it? What can we do differently? What they've learned? Like, why did it work? Why, why it didn't work? Uh, what algorithms they use? What is the best algorithm for this thing? Uh, so you're doing kind of a majority of the work, like 80% of the work is not you doing something new, it's like checking what exists, what other people did, what were the limitations, what were the connections, what they in, uh, draw the inspiration from, what is the state of the art, and then the rest is like a kind of a contributing to it, like you synthesize something or you say there is a gap, like nobody tried that, I, I'm gonna try that, right? Um, so, yeah, you you it's kind of fun you in you know you in charge uh we most of the time we don't tell you really what to do uh you sort of doing it yourself um choosing what you want to do picking the domain uh you can pick the domain that you're familiar with or you can pick something that you're not that familiar with so you will learn more um we have projects in vr we have some in machine learning um some yeah some mobile as well uh, some people do a little bit of game. Um, those who are kind of going into Max from the game uh, track. Um, some are doing some technology-based research that they're measuring something like in software or doing some uh, human evaluations, some you know user evaluations. Uh, most of the time we do uh, quantitative studies. So we collect some data and then we analyze it. So doing kind of uh, refreshing some of the statistical analysis, uh, some of the you know standard deviation analysis, ANOVA, um, calculating stats, um, that's kind of useful. Um, 
Yeah, I'm also supervising some um, uh, some students which do interaction design. So they focus slightly on different things. They focus more on the process, on heuristics, on kind of user evaluations, um, less on the technology, but more on the usability and, and so on. Um, but it's within Max, yeah, we uh, we had those discussions with Rune, and it's mostly about technology. So it should be contributing to technology rather than uh, human factors. But it, it is kind of a in between. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think we you will get more of these talks next semester for the actual master thesis, but. I would really encourage you to spend the the break, the summer break, to kind of uh, soul searching and like thinking what you want to do, uh, doing some a little bit of a background, and then once you go into project planning and advanced project work, you should sort of you know know what you want to uh, get yourself into. Uh, so we have two courses: project planning is the one where you're actually developing a plan, and then advanced project work is. It's kind of like a small mini project, research project that you do on a very small scale. So you may don't know something, you may don't know some answers, or you have a plan to do something for your master project, but you don't know whether they exist, the tools exist or something like this. Uh, so then you can do kind of a mini study on the advanced project work to answer your, your questions, right? Um, so we have um, time for you to go through the kind of a literature review, hypothesis setting, testing, and writing in a kind of a single course, which will tell you what are the stages of your project when you're doing your master's. Um, and then you kind of end up in the master's. Um, we're trying to get, because we kind of an applied computer science program also, so we're trying to get some industrial collaborations and advertise some of the projects which are related to you know, public sector or some companies. Um, so they, they will be kind of announced uh, later on as well uh, for your inspiration. We don't have as strict process as for bachelor uh, because bachelors are kind of group based. So we have to form the groups and, and so on. So we have the pool of topics and then we kind of force students into that. With the master topics, yeah, it's, we do advertise topics, but you welcome to propose your own um, with a given supervisor. So, yeah, so I think that's all. Um, if you have any questions or comments. The next essay should be convinced to a point and explanation. Yeah. Uh, based on like the current essays or essays number two, mm -hmm. uh, what are missing for the next essays? The explanation part, like, yeah. Yeah. So the next one, we have to kind of make the case and kind of explain why we're making the case and kind of make an argument for the case. So for this time round, it was okay to do reviews as an essay. For next time round, try not to do reviews. Try to kind of make a point. Uh, and then the, the reviews will be countering the point, counter arguments, right? So for this one, it was kind of uh, depending of what you were reviewing. If you're reviewing a review, it's kind of hard to argue with the review. You can point out the weak spots and so on, right? But it's not really a counter argument. It's more like a nitpicking of the review itself. Uh, for the next one, Everybody should try to do an argument, and then the counter argument is kind of trying to counter somebody's argument, right? Um, again, it's a little bit artificial, right? Because we're kind of doing it like for the purpose of the course. So you can be a little bit like you can play a devil's advocate, right? Uh, you can play something like you know, AI is going to take over the world uh, and you have some evidence that, you know, uh, that that's going to happen. <laughs> it's okay, right? As long as you build your evidence kind of correctly, right? Or, or you use like uh, an example of something that is controversial and make a claim that is clearly false, but you have evidence that it's not, right? Uh, so then the counter-arguer has to find 
reasons why it's wrong or why it's the opposite, right? Uh, and then when you're arguing the opposite, again, you may play a devil's advocate. So you can try to pick, nitpick some of the things, right? So as I was explaining to you uh, in the lectures before, we had uh, battles between Stuart and Simon in the past, one arguing for existence of God and one not, right? And it wasn't about whether God exists or not. It was about how they argued for it, right? If you make a wrong argument, that means you're wrong, right? Uh, it doesn't mean that you're actually wrong in type 1 or type 2 error. It means that you're wrong by making that claim, that making that, that, that leap, right? Um, the, the inference. So you cannot make that claim. Um, so you are trying to find like a weak points of either assumptions, which are not valid, or kind of a inference that is kind of not valid, right? Uh, with those, it was not that clear because most of them were kind of reviews. Uh, rather than kind of a claiming a particular point. Um, but for the next one, try, yeah, try to use more than one paper as an evidence and try to make the claim, right? Yeah. Uh, and I, I think kind of up to two pages is a good format. So something like now is perfect, perfect size enough to kind of make that possible, right? The first essays were a little bit on the short end and they were a little bit like sketchy. Uh, you were kind of mastering the flow and structure and so on. This one is much better and the, the two pages ones were, yeah, they were kind of nice to read already. Uh, so you like, if you were not familiar with the particular domain, you can learn something from reading either the essay or the review about the domain, right? So they were informative enough, yeah. So try to keep that style, but try to make it less of a review of what somebody else's work was. Try to use that work as an evidence, right? Uh, so you don't have to, like, if you, uh, we were discussing it last time. If you're using a particular paper for supporting your claim that something is true or false, you're not really discussing the quality of the, of the article. We're kind of assuming it's good. Here you could discuss, and people were doing that. They were saying, what was weak and what was strong about the other's paper, right? When you're kind of making your own claim, you don't spend time on that. Um, yeah. So counter-arguing counter -arguing and kind of uh, making uh, a claim is the main goal, trying to avoid just plain reviews. Um, yeah. All right. All right. Sounds good.